Edmund Campion, Great Elizabethan, Jesuit Priest, Martyr 16th century Europe was convulsed with the religious and political struggle we call the Reformation. There was tension between the believers of the old religion, Catholicism, and those who protested against its corruption, the Protestants. In 1534, King Henry VIII of England split from the Pope in Rome and demanded that his subjects take an oath of supremacy to him alone, both as political and spiritual ruler. His daughter, Queen Elizabeth I, affirmed this royal supremacy and began persecuting those Catholics who did not accept the Reformed faith, Anglicanism. In many ways, the Elizabethan age was a glorious time for England. Playwrights like William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe flourished, and intrepid explorers like Francis Drake and Walter Raleigh spread the prestige of England across the globe, feted and encouraged by their monarch Elizabeth. Of all these, none was more gifted in mind and word than Edmund Campion. And no one exemplified the crisis of conscience between God and country better than he. As a young scholar from Oxford, Edmund had every worldly success. He had accepted the Anglican faith and had been made deacon. When Elizabeth visited Oxford, he welcomed her with an impressive speech in Latin. His gifts as an orator were unparalleled. Indeed, he endeared himself to Elizabeth I by his erudition and his eloquence, and the rumours were that he would soon be made Archbishop of Canterbury. But Campion's conscience was in turmoil. While pledging his political loyalty to the Queen, he knew that his Christian faith demanded an obedience to Christ alone and his vicar on earth, the Pope. Unfortunately, the Pope, Pius V, considered Queen Elizabeth an illegitimate heretic and supported a military expedition from Spain to dethrone her. This meant that every Catholic in the country who supported the Pope became a potential traitor. Troubled by these political events, Campion fled, first to Ireland, then to Douai in France, where he rejected his Anglican faith and pledged to live as a Catholic. It was here that he first met the Jesuits and was won over by them. He entered the Society of Jesus in Rome in 1573 and was ordained a priest in Bohemia, today's Slovakia. For six years he taught rhetoric and philosophy in Prague. In 1580, Campion returned to England to minister to the persecuted Catholics. He found a weak and frightened church, oppressed by heavy taxation, deprived of civil liberties and with few priests. To encourage the faithful, he published his Ten Reasons for Being a Catholic, a polemic essay proving that the Catholic faith alone was the one true religion. His pamphlet was widely distributed. It brought comfort and courage to many Catholics, but it seriously annoyed the Anglican government. To be a Catholic priest in Elizabethan England meant being a hunted man. Edmund Campion was always on the move, appearing suddenly, saying Mass, hearing confessions, 
mingling a little with the faithful and then disappearing as swiftly as he had come or hiding in a priest hole those secret rooms in large country manors where a priest might hide safely for days while spies and informers took the place apart Campion succeeded in outwitting his opponents for 2 years before he was betrayed by a Catholic informer arrested and brought to London He was imprisoned in the Tower of London and tortured Friends from earlier times and the queen herself begged him to recant and promised him honors and a new life But Edmund remained steadfast and he was finally condemned to death on bogus charges Death by public execution was a gruesome affair He was hanged in public at Tyburn his dead body cut up into four pieces and scattered Edmund was just 40 years old Two years earlier Edmund had described his mission in stirring words popularly called Campion's brag He said My charge is to preach the gospel free of cost to minister the sacraments to instruct the simple to reform sinners to confute errors in brief to give spiritual alarm against foul vice and proud ignorance the expense is reckoned the enterprise is begun it is from god it cannot be withstood so the faith was planted so it must be restored every record we have of edmund campion every bit of his writings even his personal letters show us that he was nothing less than a man of genius truly one of the great elizabethans of his age in one way alone he was different he was saintly and steadfast to the truth as no other of them was and it was this truth which inspired him which brought him fulfillment and joy may edmund campion's inspiration become ours as well